Hi, welcome to another video from the series documenting development of a new Nixie tube called F. My name is Dalibor and for the past 12 years I was bringing the production of Nixie tubes back to life. Last week we tried cutting pins for the Nixie tube. It turned out that it's possible, we would have to modify the machine, but we can do it. Uh, the unsolved problem here was how to chamfer or round the edges of the pins. And uh, my first idea was to do it like they do it in pencil manufacturing, using sanding belts. And there were a couple of comments and emails again, thank you very much for them, suggesting other ways. Uh, one of them came from Carl, he suggested using planetary rolling machine for rolling threads. The pre-cut pins would be fed into the machine on one side, they would be pressed into a groove uh, formed like the finished pin. On the other end of the machine the pins would be already coming formed with both edges rounded. This video shows the principle, the only difference here is that the dies are straight at and not circular. A good insight on the glass to metal ceiling gave rep2403 with the command most efficient way to produce these radius pins would be on an escomatic screw machine. Cover and alloy 52 glass to metal pins are commonly made this way. A few days ago I found a supplier on the internet who offers production of these pins. Uh, they do it for glass to metal ceiling industry, which is exactly the type of the supplier we are looking for. And so we went through all the details, uh, I placed the order and in five weeks the pins should be produced. So now we need to wait before these pins arrive. Uh, there is another sample of the wire uh, made of alloy 52, which is the alloy we will use for the sealing. Uh, it's on the way and in maybe two weeks it will come, we'll cut it to pins without chamfering, without rounding, just for tests. So uh, we'll be able to try the first seals. But before we start playing with the actual sealing in the mold, I need to make the mold. So this week I finished the design of the mold and now I'm starting to manufacture it. So this is the stem that we want to produce by the mold. The mold will consist of upper part and lower part. And it will work like this. First we will insert exhaust pipe, a glass pipe here. Uh, then we will put a glass ring around the pins and we'll start heating it. And once the glass is molten we will push this upper part down and squeeze the glass into the cavity of the mold and press it into the form of the stem. So this is the stem. Then the upper die is moved back and then we will have these three rods here that are connected internally to this metal cylinder. On this metal cylinder will sit the exhaust pipe and we can lift it up and take the stem out for cooling. So that's the theory. It will be very important to make sure that these parts are meeting together very accurately. So we have here a couple of features. As the upper die goes down it will first locate the, the correct angle of rotation and, that, and, and then as it continues to slide down it will sit here and these two diameters will locate the correct position of the axis of the upper and lower die. This pin here in the upper section is here to enter the exhaust pipe and to push the glass aside so that it doesn't collapse and clog the exhaust pipe. The second version of the mold will need to be aligned accurately because we will be working with small parts and small tolerances. And so for this reason I completely removed the chucks because the chucks just introduce some level of error. 
on their own and will be holding the molds directly on the face plates here on the spindles. Before making the molds I need to find out if they run reasonably true. So first of the problems that can appear is that the spindles, the face plates of the spindles will not be parallel to each other so they will be under an angle. And another possible problem is that the axes of the spindles are shifted. Visually they seem to be aligned, but let's measure them. The front side of the left spindle is running reasonably well, it's below 100 of a millimeter. Now let's check the right spindle. So the right spindle seems to be the same, just maybe a little bit more run out, like two hundredths of a millimeter, but that should be good. So we now know that the run out of the, each of the spindles relative to the bed is quite small, but what is the run out between them? So the maximum value that I can see here is around one tenth of a millimeter. So we will see if this is a problem or not. Another interesting part will be this, the register which serves to locate the, the chucks on the spindle. I can't measure the register itself because it's interrupted by these holes, uh, but I believe that the bore itself was machined in one go with the register so that if we measure the bore we'll get accurate results. I see the needle moving some maybe two or three hundredths of a millimeter, so let's say three hundredths. Same value for the right spindle. So we found that the runout between the two face plates is around 0.1 mm, that's probably fine. The alignment of the two axes is more difficult to find out because I would have to hold the dial indicator by the spindle and I would have to do some tool for it. From what we measured I see that the machine is reasonably accurate, so I want to avoid making any tooling to measure further information about it and I will skip straight to the manufacturing of the mold itself. Uh, manufacturing of the mold will be topic for the next video. So thank you for your attention, thank you for watching and uh, enjoy the Christmas holidays. And in the next video, in one week or two, I hope to present you a finished mold.